So folks, this is a review of Moki cards. Whilst this isn't a productivity tool, it's more of a flashcard application. I thought it might be useful for those learning with space repetition and also students that are learning ready for the new academic year. Today's video is sponsored by Pipedrive. Pipedrive is a sales CRM designed to help you secure leads and business. Check it out below and we'll share more about it later in this video. So if you haven't seen Moki, uh, it has been on my radar for a little bit of time now, mainly because its design looks very similar to Things 3 and Notion sort of blended together. So Moki markets itself as take notes and make flashcards using Markdown, then study them using space repetition. If you're new to the concept of space repetition, it's basically the act of constantly repeating your learning in an effort to retain the information better for later. It uses more algorithmic learning to help you produce better results and remember things over time. My friend Ali Abdal has a smashing course on how to implement this in effective exam revision. Well worth checking it out over on Skillshare. I'll put the link below. There's also a really nice cartoon on ncase.me that goes over this. It's a nice 15 minute read but it will help explain the concept of space repetition. So Moki can be used either on the browser or downloadable on Mac. And it does allow you to import from another popular space repetition application called Anki. Now Anki is a popular one because it's one that is typically recommended by folks like Tim Ferriss. Now the pricing of Moki is free. The free plan comes with offline abilities, the desktop app, and also unlimited offline storage. I believe you can also download it on Windows as well. Whereas with Mohi Pro, which is $5 per month, that'll get you the mobile app, the web app, syncing and backup, 10 gigabyte storage and priority support. So before we move on, how does this compare to say Anki and Supernotes, as we did a Supernotes feature this week? Well, with Anki, it's very similar, but with a much improved design in my opinion. Although Anki has a Bennett free plan and more analytic driven data. Anki also has a strong history of success in space repetition technology. Compare it to Supernotes, and it's not quite the same. Supernotes focuses more on your note taking, whilst Moki focuses more on the notes that need to be learnt. Compare it to something like Remnote, and Remnote is more like tools like Rome than what Moki does here. And yes, folks, I'm set to review Remnote, so do subscribe if you want to check that out. So before we dive into a tour of the product, let's take a moment to explore Pipedrive. Are you in a sales team? Do you manage sales leads? Are you in charge of the sales pipeline? If the answer is yes, then you'll need to know about Pipedrive. Managing leads, keeping track of communications and managing processes can be overwhelming. Pipedrive makes sales simpler with a host of features to help you stay on top of all the new leads and conversations. Let's hone in on a feature. Pipedrive's lead booster feature is a customizable chatbot that you can add to any page of your website. Lead Booster will engage visitors to your site and send qualified leads direct to the right person in your sales team. Now, 90,000 companies use Pipedrive and deals worth a combined total of over 24 billion have been closed on the CRM software. It's one of the best sales tools for managing incoming leads out there. I used Pipedrive at a previous company I worked with and it was super easy to get on with. There's plenty of ways you can optimize it even further. There was a chap at our work who dug really deep setting up some fantastic workflows and educating me in the process. Now Pipedrive aims to be your one-stop sales hub. You can learn more about Pipedrive in the description below and start winning deals for you and your team in this easy to use hub. You can go to pipedrive.com slash keep productive to find out more about Pipedrive. Okay folks, so here we are on the Mac application and the first thing you'll met with is up in the top left hand corner, you can choose this dashboard and this dashboard is super simple. It helps you find out three key metrics for the day. What cards you've learned, how many of them, the retention rate, so how successful you were on those cards and also the total reviews that you've got. 
So as you can see, this is the graph they supply. This will go up if you're learning more and naturally show uh, progress or depreciation. So on this left hand side you've got due today. These are any of the cards that are due today. I'll explain how they actually appear in a bit but if I press due today it brings it into this really nice layout that shows you in the top right hand corner that I've got six cards to review. I'm actually two through this at the moment. It's sort of like your inbox. Now I can actually move this sidebar away and focus entirely on this and what I can do is either press space if I've remembered it or F if I've forgotten. So as you can see this is part of the pharmacology section and specifically in the nested area called cardio. Now I don't know what any of this means but this is a link to fibrates which is another note that is connected to. And as you can see this is faded out here sort of like a scratch card so if I were to get this right or correct um, it would r reveal itself and naturally obviously that's me proving I remembered it but if I've forgotten I'd have to move on. So let's go ahead and say I've forgotten this one. If I press F as you can see it's moved forward and I would need to learn that again. But as you can see the same comes up here with the class so if I press space, you can see it reveals that that is class 2. So it actually waits in your bay until you review it. And if I press space, then I've remembered it. I can also press space if I've remembered this one as well, and it reveals it too. Now down at the bottom here, you can use, for example, forgotten, and the next review is in 64 days apparently. And also, you can undo the last review, and also whether it's remembered, and the next review will be in this many days. Do remember the reason why these dates are completely out is because this is sample data. When you're adding new bits of data, you can actually modify how often they appear. So the different forms of flashcard, you can actually choose whether they're slides. So you can appear in the next slide. And as you can see, that is the piece of information um, that it reveals itself. And as you can see here, it says I'm almost done. And it says you've remembered 83% of the cards and you can re-review the missed cards when you're ready. I can always skip that for today. Now if I want to, I can actually just go and learn the new cards. So that was more of the review aspect, whereas if I want to go and learn them, it brings up the same concept. So if I were to press space on this, it would add it to the reviews area. And the reviews area is basically where it then begins to try and train you using space repetition. If I were to press F, it would go into the backlog. So I would need to review that again. So for example, if I press add to reviews, I can start clearing these as I learn them. This is one I actually created earlier in the French section, but as you can see here, if you wanted to click and test your knowledge, there's no actual limitations to doing in here. It won't affect your learning, uh, but if I knew this one and I'm happy with this one, I can press space. Okay, so let's open this one. And as you can see, I've learned probably about 10 extra cards, but I still have 10 left. So if I go over to due today, there shouldn't be anything, but if I were to skip today, that means that new cards will appear tomorrow. Let's take you to some of the decks. So for example, there's a Japanese section. This is sample. And as you can see, this is how all of the cards appear. Now, what's very neat is they use what's called Markdown to go ahead and make each of the cards much more in-depth and look a lot more attractive as well. So if I opened up this one here... Um, I have no idea what this means. Uh, I really do want to learn Japanese, but this is, seems much farther, further in advance. But if we go over to uh, this three dots on the side, these are options. If I go to edit, you can see here that they've made this one a header. And as you can see here, you've got a little bit of a um, sort of a pop-up text format here where you can do a range of things. You can add furigana. Uh, which is, I think, a type of Japanese um, text. So that will help you to perform that. You can create a new card from the selected piece of text. So, for example, if you wanted to start it on this specific type of adjective, you can produce a new card on there, and you can even translate to a certain language. But that's how that's set up. And if I were to go and press cancel and preview this, you can see that this new note appears. So you don't necessarily have to have notes that reveal themselves but ones that test you on whether you need to know the note. So for example, um, it could be a very static piece of information like this. Whereas if you were trying to learn a specific piece of information, you can see that this is the answer here, and down here it means doctor. Um, so uh, obviously I didn't know that. <laughs> but if I went to preview, 
you can see the information is nested underneath here um, and you can get all the details as well. Uh, I believe you can connect up media to it as well. So if you wanted to connect it to media, you can go down to the keyboard shortcuts and uh, there is an option here. Uh, you'd have to use some markdown to be able to select the media and that could be, for example, an MP3 on a website that you could bring in, uh, which is very useful. So when you're inside of a, a, an area, you can do a range of different things. You can see that this is the Japanese vocabulary section. And you can see that the, you can see basically the total of no, amount of notes that you've learned in this area. So in this case, I've learned two out of zero out of two. And you can see the new cards that have been added here. So you can bring stuff in for a quick review if you want to per deck. So that's quite useful if you just want to do a quick revision session and you can say whether you remembered it or you've forgotten it and they'll bring that in uh, to your learnings as well. So that's something that's very helpful uh, and you can go back to the same page and they still appear as new cards. Now you can change the view here as well. You can show all the slides that come along with it, um, which is sort of like opening the properties up and you can even see a notebook view, a list view and a grid view as well, which is all very helpful. And if you've got tons of them, you can search them, filter them, and sort them as well. Now, some of the real magic is inside the review settings. If you go to the review settings, you can change the multiplier on which you learn. So for example, uh, this actually was a little bit tricky, um, but this will help you here to explain it better. So for example, if I add a new card, after the first day, it'll test you. And if you remembered it, then it will grow two days. Um, as you can see here, um, it will then du duplicate that to four days. But if on the fourth day you didn't remember it, it would then halve that. So that's basically called the forgetting multiplier, which is the number here. And if you remembered it from that day, again, it would grow um, and continue using this remember multiplier. So if I were to, say, change this to four, um, that still is a bit, it actually makes it a bit more obvious. So if you add the card after one day, if you successfully learnt it, it would go to four days, then 16 days. Then it would obviously divide that by two, 16 by two by, as you can see, it's eight there. But if I were to say, um, you know, let's be a bit more analytic with it and go to 0 0.2, you can see there that it goes even more so. So you can be a more, bit more aggressive on how you want to set up your forgetting multiplier. It took me a few months to honestly learn this uh, a bit ago. So um, do spend some time on how you think um, you may approach this. For example, if you're someone that is aggressively learning for an exam, this process might not help. Something might like um, this might be a bit more aggressive because say you've got 20 days for the exam and you want to make sure you learn everything, then that could be a bit more of a uh, successful flow of learning. So that's just something to familiar. But if you're casually learning, 20 days, I don't know. Uh, this is an awful example because you may not learn after a year, um, but as you can imagine, you can modify it to whatever you want. There's also review cards in reverse, so if you wanted to change um, the whichever side you have on it, so you have two sides to it, and as you can see here, that, that, that pops up, um, and you can save that later. So you can add these two reviews as well uh, if you want to. So if I were to add that to reviews, it removes it, removes it from the new card section, which means you successfully learnt it. And as you can see here, one out of two learnt. And based on um, the success, obviously, of learning it, then that will go into the due today. Um, so tomorrow, um, if the settings are all you know performing well, that means that that will appear there. So that's a little bit about how you can do it. There's a really useful guide on here that helps you to explain it. Um, and you can have this notebook view. So if you wanted to have um, a bit more of a sort of longer uh, term note, you can actually uh, coordinate that information there. Um, I'm definitely considering using this uh, for both learning um, some Japanese um, and also catching up on some... Uh, I, I was really interested in Hebrew as well, so I may uh, look to pick that up. So a few of the things that they plan to add are the following. They plan to add tags, publishing decks, so you and your friends can communicate um, and share them. Um, and that could be useful for, you know, lecturers that produce decks that their students want to learn. And also the ability to follow your friends and compare progress. Now, if I'm honest, folks, I'm really impressed by this application. I really like the concept. Um, just a note, they do actually add all of these, apart from the French one. Uh, I actually was setting up the French one here. 
um, as things that are a pre-default. But if you just want to delete them or archive them, uh, you can do so like this, um, or you can actually delete them uh, from scratch. So you can go ahead and remove them there. But I really like the concept of the application. I think it's really well produced. And uh, I think even on the free plan, uh, they offer a good experience. Um, it definitely looks better than apps like Anki, if I'm honest. Um, and it does have some really nice abilities. Um, the only thing I wasn't able to fully demonstrate was actually the abilities when it comes to the bi-directional linking. Um, and one of the things that I also noticed as well is it's a little bit tricky to get used to the markdown formatting if you're not someone that is brand new to it. But after a few sessions, I think I'll probably be able to produce better cards. And having this on the Mac probably will force me to do a bit more learning on it, um, especially when it comes to the language learning. So I definitely recommend it for students, language learners, and those looking to consistently repeat a certain habit. I'd probably give this one an 8 out of 10 in terms of experience and layout um, and everything like that. Um, but definitely not a note taker, definitely not something you can use as, a, say, a productivity application, but something great for learning. So folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We're planning a few more student things as we turn up in September. So please do check out uh, more videos we have on this channel. Please do subscribe. And a big thank you to Pipe Drive for sponsoring today's video. Anyway, folks, a big thank you and stay safe and I hope you are well. Cheers, everyone. Bye.